Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be learning even more about cell division, specifically mitosis, and we're going to be thinking about this in an even more detailed, advanced version. So this is our second page of notes. We're going to jump right in. Before we jump in, let's really overview cell division and why we need the cell cycle. Um, again, we don't want the cell cycle to go wrong because that's how we get diseases and cancer, but our goal was to grow new body cells, repair and replace old body cells. And all of this needs to happen in a perfect synchronization of moving DNA around the cell. Otherwise, we're going to have mess ups. And again, that's going to create some diseases. So in order to understand that in this dance of the DNA around the cell, we have to understand the different forms DNA can come in. DNA can come in a really long stringy form that we are maybe a little less likely used to seeing. Um, this part, if we were to look under a very fancy microscope, we still wouldn't be able to see the DNA all that well. It is only when the DNA has super condensed and coiled up amongst itself again and again and again, coiled, 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 that we can see it because it's so tightly packed. And then usually we're used to seeing this one in pictures because it's this well-known X shape for DNA. So we call that chromosomes. So I remember this by saying chromatin is thin and stringy. I can't see it, but chromosomes are condensed. I can see them. They're visible under a microscope. So as we learn about the different stages of the cell division and move forward, we need to be able to identify each stage during looking at a picture. And sometimes looking at the different forms of the DNA help us identify it. So again, we're talking, when we say cell division, we're really thinking about cell cycle. The division part only happens when we're really looking at the mitosis part, but we're really going to review all of it because we need to be able to identify everything through pictures. Let's jump in. Our first and longest stage was interphase. We learned that last class, and now we're learning that in this picture here, we have a plant cell and we're looking at it under a microscope here's the nucleus and this we're used to thinking maybe as that nucleolus but I don't see any X's so my DNA is in that long thin stringy version chromatin I like to think this looks like an eyeball and that's what I look for to find interphase examples during interphase we also know that this takes a really long time because we have to replicate the DNA which refers to copying the DNA which part of interphase did that happen Ah, it was S phase, the synthesizing or making phase. And what was the G standing for? That was for growing. And so we know that that is going to be in interphase as well. And that takes a really long time, which is why interphase is the longest period of time. But what our new piece of information is, is we cannot see the DNA easily in interphase. It's still intact in my nucleus, but I can't see it. Okay. Now we're going to learn about mitosis. Don't forget that mitosis is when we're really doing the division part with the goal that at the end we want two genetically identical cells with the same exact DNA. So while we have the DNA dance around, we have to make sure that at the end there's identical copies of DNA in both of the new cells. So this is the really hard part. We are, I've talked about interphase. Now we're going to learn about the different parts of mitosis. This is the division part. To help us, I like to use the acronym PMAT for each phase and their order, PMAT. So the first one, P, prophase. To help us remember what its job is, I like to call it the preparatory stage. You should draw one of these pictures, okay? Maybe the animated one is a little bit easier. Okay, let's point out some key things. The first thing that we notice, this nucleus kind of looks dotted. That's because it's actually dissolving. And there's a membrane around the nucleus, so we say that nuclear membrane is dissolving. Ooh, it's dotted. It's falling apart. But that's not a bad thing because we are going to need these chromosomes to move around. And yes, I said chromosomes. And that's because we can now see the DNA. Even in the actual real image, we can actually see the DNA. They look like a bowl of chopped up fingers. Yeah, I said it. You'll never forget it now. Chopped up fingers or worms or something. We can see them. They're so much more condensed. It no longer looks like a single eyeball. Okay? And that's because our chromatin is now in the form of visible chromosomes. And those chromosomes are about to move around the cell. And we're getting prepared for other things. So now we actually have a new organelle we've never ever learned about. And that's called the centriole. You should star that circle it, kiss it. That's a brand new word, centriole. 
Those are these things. I call them the Spider-Mans of the cell. And why? Well, they shoot out these things called spindle fibers, which are like spidey webs. Okay, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. This little macaroni looking business here is shooting out these little lines and those are going to do things like Spider-Man does with his spider webs. All right, we're going to jump into the next part, metaphase, metaphase, the M and P mat. This is when the chromosomes meet in the middle. And we like the M to remind us about meet in the middle because that's exactly what's happening. Remember that Spider-Man stuff, that centriole? He's shooting out his spidey webs called spindle fibers. And guess what they grab right onto? They grab right onto the chromosomes. And they yank those chromosomes here and there until the chromosomes all come in a line on the middle. We call this kind of the equator of the cell. Picture this like a globe. Wouldn't that be the equator? So draw yourself a picture of a cell and make sure your X's are all meeting in the middle. Here's what it looks like in real life, which is not as clean, but this is our easy to identify metaphase. The chromosomes are all aligning in the middle. And now what we really need to do in a little bit is to be able to separate out the pieces of DNA in these chromosomes into each different pole of this cell. Think about this as the north and south pole. In a second, we're going to somehow need to pull them apart. And that's what our next thing does, anaphase. The chromosomes are going to move apart or away. So those spidey webs grab, grab, grab. Those spindle fibers grab at the different chromosomes and they yank them so the two little butterfly wings come apart. So so in here, the red and that red one, they're now separated, but they were identical copies that we copied in interphase. So now each half of this cell, the north and the south pole, they're getting identical copies because those two different halves of the X's were identical, and they're moving to the opposite ends. I like this one because it really looks like fingers that are kind of moving apart from each other, and that's anaphase, moving the chromosomes apart to the poles. In our next one, telophase, we're now going to start pinching off into two new cells, telophase for two. So here we're kind of finishing up our experience. The chromosomes are now in the edges of the cell. We no longer need our spindle fibers. And what do we see reforming? You're right, we see the nuclear membrane starting to reform because we don't want our DNA just sitting around in nothing. So we're going to put our nucleus back around the two different parts. All right, but we don't quite pinch our cell in half yet because that is not part of mitosis. That's a separate step we're about to review in a second. But really, we're back kind of almost like prophase, but now we have two identical nuclei forming. All right, again, we're kind of going backwards to where we were in prophase. So we initially didn't have chromosomes. We had the thin version. So these coiled up versions are starting to unravel or uncoil and are becoming thinner and a little tougher to see over time. And then when we get to cytokinesis, remember that's the cell moving. This is where we actually are going to split the cytoplasm in half. That's a whole different stage. So we had interphase, then we have mitosis, which is PMAT, and then we have cytokinesis. So I like to call it IPMAT-C. Now, this happens a little differently in animals and plants, the cytokinesis business. In an animal, yes, it kind of looks like a butt. I agree. Uh, we call it a cleavage furrow because there's no cell wall. This guy can pinch in half until this actually becomes two different cells. Think about this like a track bag, and we're squeezing the strings on the track bag until it pinches the cytoplasm in half, and we get two new daughter cells. All right? This cannot happen in plants. Why? What does it have outside the cell membrane? It has a cell wall. So we can't do that pinching action. It's too firm. So what ends up happening is little parts of cell membrane and cell wall called cell plates. They form in the middle and they start to fuse or bond together until we have a new wall form in the middle. So no pinching happens in plant cells. All right. Amazingly, you guys got through it all. We will practice identifying and practice modeling the different parts of mitosis. Wonderful job. Make sure you really, really drew some pictures. All right. Bye.